I don't know how I keep pushing the button and it just goes live without me. Hey, Gil Michael, how are you? It is a long day for the kid. But I said I was committed to, to sharing everybody's um, wins and we were going to celebrate and we're going to do all of this kind of stuff. Um, so I want to make sure that I am that I am on track with doing that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pearls are, um, you know, my birthday's in June and I think Pearl is our stone. So I've always like really been attracted to Pearl. So thank you for, <laughs> for saying that. Hey, Anthony. Right, we're going to wait for just a couple seconds. If you guys could take a minute to share the video, that would be awesome. And then if you actually share the video, because I've asked you so nicely, um, then type me um, into the comment box so I can thank you personally. Um, I am doing well tonight. Thank you for asking. How are you? Um, <laughs> I am just going to get in all your business and because of this webinar, El Marie, I'm talking about ego. Hey, Sterling, how are you? Sterling the Polisher. That's interesting. Good. Thank you for sharing the video. Thanks for likes and, um, and all of the shares. I am grinding. It's been a long day for me, Vaughn. Um, so yeah, I am grinding. My birthday is June 23rd. Um, so you are Bruce at June Sixth, you're a Gemini, I believe. I am a, um, I'm a Cancer. So, uh, hey, Jens Diaz, I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you guys? So, I wanted to talk about. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate you sharing. So, I wanted to talk about the ego a little bit today. I was just on a webinar, and um, I want to talk about, you know, why sometimes we um, uh, let our ego get in the way. Hey, Warren. My buddy Warren is on. Um, sometimes we let our ego um, get in, you know, the way of us getting what we want. So I definitely want to talk about that for a little bit. Um, but I also want people to share their wins. Oh, Elmarie, you're a Gemini too, huh? Hmm, that's interesting. I'll save my opinion on people's <laughs> signs. Hey, Lisa, how are you, my friend? So one of the things, hey, Sylvanus, hi, nice to see you. Um, so, like I said, I want to be really intentional about celebrating your wins So, and our wins. So, if you did something that was amazing today or you, you know, were really successful at something or you're proud of something, just share it in the comment box so I can kind of shout you out. I think today... <laughs> oh, 33 Ways to Polish Your Mindset is officially a best-selling book. Congratulations. I'm super proud of you. That is a win for sure. Um, my win for today. Oh, hey, my daddy's watching. Hey, daddy. <laughs> my mom is signed on. So everybody knows I'm a big old daddy's girl. So hey, daddy. Hey, mom. I hope you guys are well. Um, so if you, if you succeeded, hey, Derek from Tennessee, if you did something, just type it in the comment box. Cause like I said, I want to share wins. Um, so my big win for today, um, that is I've lasted till 930. I had a such a long day. Um, I've been very um, intentional about doing more um, phone conversations with potential clients. Um, and so that's a big stretch for me because I, I really don't like talking on the phone. And so my goal is to talk to 10 people a day and I accomplished that today. So I'm really proud about that. Sometimes you really have to get on the phone and just talk to people, especially um, if you're looking to grow your business. Um, I've never been like a direct sales kind of girl, um, so it's definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, so I'm excited about that. Oh, Warren, congratulations. Warren got asked to speak at an event. Oh, so happy for you. Uh, Warren is awesome. He is a, um Instagram strategist. And so he does a lot of phenomenal things. So if you're looking to grow your brand on Instagram, Warren is definitely the dude. Um, so Elmarie finished her day job on time. That's always important. Uh, Andre Andretti got two uh, major logos designed to the second round. Awesome. Uh, I love creative mind. So that's great for you. Um, so keep sharing your wins. I just want to, um, there's a lot of things happening in my house right now. So, and, and Elmarie ate well. <laughs> That's always awesome. There's a lot of things happening in my house. So, um, you know, kids are getting ready for bed and taking showers and finishing homework. The dog is restless because I think he needs to go outside. So just be patient if anything kind of shows up <laughs> in this video tonight. Just be patient. But like I said, I really wanted to talk about uh, 10 people. Yes, sir. I really wanted to talk about, you know, our ego. Hey, Don, how are you? 
and how sometimes our ego, you know, keeps us from what we want. I mean, I've had several conversations uh, with a lot of different friends. Hey, Carl. Um, and, you know, people, I think, are at a point, um, especially in my circle and myself included, I think we're having a lot of challenges. And I think that when you get to a certain place in life, um, you know, asking for what you need um, or what you want is a challenge because we don't want to seem like we're uninformed. We want to, don't want to seem like, you know, my big thing is like, I hate to look stupid. That's like my, my catch. Anytime I feel like I'm, you know, looking stupid, then, you know, it's, it sends me into all sorts of crazy behavior. Hey, Charles. And so, hey, Petrina, thanks for joining me again. And so, and, and that's really the ego. Um, questions, as they say, there's no bad question. The only bad question is the one that you have not asked. Questions, um, are not like a sign of ignorance. Questions are not a sign of you being weak. Asking for help um, does not make you seem less sad. In fact, um, I think asking questions um, really is a sign that you want to broaden your skill set, that you want to you know, broaden your scope, you want to get a better grasp on things that you recognize. I think most great people, most successful people, um, recognize that they have weaknesses, that there are areas are there are lanes that you may not um, be the strongest in. So that's why they always say Hi, you need to hire your weakness. You don't need to hire people that all think the same. You don't need to hire people that do the same things as you do. I would love to come do a seminar in Chicago, Carl, definitely. Um, hey, Vincent, Hutch Price, how are you? So you definitely need to, to rethink um, and somebody said earlier, check the ego feel that, um, you know, you need help, but you're too um, scared, too ashamed, too prideful um, to ask for it. So your ego is kind of like that little voice inside of your head that is always worried what other people are going to think about you. Um, you know, at some point you have to stop caring about what others think, especially when it comes to um, you doing what you're supposed to do in your life. Oh, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. I mean, I think that we're all called to do something great. I think some of us don't do that. Hey, Carolyn, because we're so concerned about what other people are going to think about our mission, about our passion, about our purpose, um, about our business. We're so concerned with being judged by other people um, that we fail um, to live up to our greatness. And part of living up to our greatness is accepting help um, along the way. That's you, Jacqueline. I get it. I definitely get it. So tonight, just a real quick um, broadcast. Hey, DeMarco. Uh, ego equals immunity. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I would like you to explain that. DeMarco is, is um, <laughs> he's a comedian, so I never know if like what you're saying is actually true. Um, yeah, especially when it comes to your next level. I'll gl I'm good, Crystal. I'm glad that you, you needed this because I definitely needed it today. I know there are absolute times, hey, Jack, um, where I should ask for help and I don't. Um, and so one of my intentions, especially ending this year and going into 2018, um, is to be more intentional. I think that people really want to help. I think that there are others. Oh, immaturity. <laughs> Okay, okay. So DeMarco says ego equals immaturity. I absolutely think that that's true. Um, not immunity, immaturity. Gotcha. Um, and so it's my intention to, to, to ask people. People want to support you. I never mind people asking me questions about anything. Um, I think that, you know, people, um, you know, you, you want to get ahead. You want to do good. You want to make an impact. And you can't do that by yourself. Hey, Shauna. Hey, Lance. You never get to where your 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 next level. You never get to you know your success. You never you know. I'm the first one to admit that. There's no way that I could have ended up where I have ended up and done some of the things that I have done without people supporting me. Um, and so I think you know little you little kids. You know they're they're so open to asking questions. Some kids you want to tell them stop asking so many questions. Um, my youngest son. Um, I used to give him a limit on questions because he would ask question after question after question. But in all honesty, I mean, that's the only way you learn. That's the only way you grow. Hey, Cindy. Um, and, and yes, though, Andretti makes a good point. That's, that's good. You want to make sure you ask the right people. 
Um, and so you really, that's why I say you need to study people, especially if it's a, a connection that you're not necessarily familiar with. You want to make sure that they are the right person to go to because people say a lot of things. Um, and so I think you definitely have to judge um, people, um, at least I know I do, by their works. I don't like look at their social media to see what they're doing. I want to know that they've actually done this. Um, oh, Shauna, thank you. <laughs> Shauna says, I'm a witness working with Nikki. Yes. I don't mind questions. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, and I think most people that are secure in who they are and what they do welcome questions. I was talking to um, a lady before uh, earlier today, and she had had a bad experience um, with somebody that she had hired to be a consultant for her company. And um, I asked her, I was like, well, did you, you know, did you research her? Did you ask her questions? Did you ask for research? And she hadn't done any of that. Hey, Dominique Hark, how are you? Hart, Hart, how are you, darling? Um, and she hadn't asked any of that. And I think that um, I know you're an intelligent comedian, DeMarco. I was not saying anything about your intelligence. I was just saying that sometimes I don't know when you're being serious or when you were joking. And when you said what you said earlier, it didn't seem you know, right. So that's all I was saying. I was not saying you weren't intelligent. Intel I think comedians have to be intelligent. But anyway, um, and she hadn't asked any questions. She had just accepted that this person was the expert. And what I told her, hey, Bray, is that experts who are secure in what they've done and who they've helped and, and how they've, you know, you know, operated in their business do not mind giving referrals. They don't mind answering questions. They don't mind doing any of that being checked out because we're, we're secure in, in how we operate. And so you really do have to ask um, questions, not only about people that you hire, but people that you consult. Um, you know, I, it tried and true is what I go with people that have been there. They've done that. And now they want to share um, Bonnie DeShung in Chicago. I'm not sure who all is familiar. If you're from Chicago, you should absolutely know who Bonnie DeShung is. But she was, you know, she was in Chicago radio for a long time. And I remember when I first moved um, to Chicago and, you know, I was starting to break into the market there. You know, she called me and she's like, if you ever need anything, pick up the phone and call me. She's like, do not. Um, you know, feel like you're alone in this business because there are people that have gone before you and paved the way and will, you know, will pull you along. She's like, you can't get um, to a certain level. I love Bonnie. I owe, I absolutely owe my life in Chicago to Bonnie in a lot of instances. But she was like, you can't get to a certain level in life and not reach your hand back and help somebody along. But just going back to what I was saying earlier about the ego, um, a lot of times we don't know when people are in trouble. We don't know. And so if you are in trouble or if you're stuck in your business or if you need, did you have a crush on Bonnie? Oh, that's so cute. Um, if you, um, if you're stuck in your business or you're, you know, you need help, you have to ask. People cannot read your mind. So that goes back to the ego, making sure that your ego is not stopping you from getting what you want. Ray Richardson, what's your advice on finding your passion? Um, I was, th I, I've always said that, that your passion really is something that you would do for free. So we don't want you to do it for free. Obviously we want to make sure that you're making money. Um, but your passion really is so, I think, deeply ingrained in you. You probably do it all the time. Um, and, and don't even realize that it's your passion. I think a lot of people think finding your passion or finding you, your purpose has to be like this deep process. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a deep process. I mean, like I said, when, you know, it, sometimes it's just something you do all the time. So like for me, um, you know, communicating is, is really who I am. It's about my purpose. It's about, you know, how I show up in the world. And so, and so I do that. I communicate. I do Facebook Lives. I do radio. I write. I blog. That's who I am. And that's my passion. And, and honestly, I would do radio for free. I love it that much. Thank God I have gotten to a place where I don't have to, um, but I absolutely would um, do it for free. And Shauna makes a good point. I think that you are you are pulled to your your passion over and over and over again, and it may take different forms. But I think if you really stop and focus on what you enjoy doing, um, what you think could be of value, um, then um, then you find it. Passion is is good God 
is too. Yes, God is good. Passion is good. Doing what you were brought here to do um, is, is good. So I think that a lot of us, you know, we, we get to the point where we feel that we've, we've accomplished something, that we're like good, and so then we stop when really what we should be um, striving for is, is that greatness. I mean, I think we were all put on here to be great uh, in one, uh, one way or another. And so, you know, we really have to stretch ourselves um, and we have to kind of put ego to, to the side and, and show up the way that we're supposed to show up. Um, you know, somebody was asking, uh, we were talking earlier and El Marie can, um, I'm so positive. <laughs> well, thank you. El Marie and I were talking about this earlier. I mean, a lot of times, you know, even if we're operating in our purpose or we're, you know, we're operating in our passion, um, you know, fear can definitely be, um, a part of it, you know. You know, you get scared to do certain things, especially if what you're trying to do is so big that, that it's like outside of you. Um, and I think that fear is a good thing. Um, I heard T.D. Jakes do a whole sermon on, on fear and how, you know, if he's not scared just a little bit, then what he's doing is not big enough. And I talked about this on another Facebook Live. I mean, I think we all do things, you know, that terrify us. Um, and that's when you know um, that it... Um, that it's something that is going to be great. Um, I think that the people um, that that push through that fear are the ones that make it to the other side of greatness. And so you really, um, really have to push through. Yeah, you know what, DeMarco, I agree. I think if you're not scared, then it really is not going to stretch you. It's not for you. But a lot of people think that if they're scared, then they're not on the right track. That if they're scared, then it's not meant for them. And I, that's not necessarily true. Um, you just have to learn to push through that fear um, and do it anyway. You know, some of the greatest people I know on stage get get stage fright. Um, J. Anthony Brown, who was the comedian on the Tom Joyner Morning Show, would get physically ill sometimes before he had to go on stage. But he went on stage anyway, and he killed it. Um, and that's what we all have to learn to do. Um, I get, you know, I get nervous when I do public speaking, but I do public speaking for a living, technically. Um, it's just that little bit of nerve that kind of keeps you focused, that little bit of fear um, that makes you prepare, um, the little bit of fear that makes sure that all of the, you know, the T's are crossed and your I's are dotted so that when you do show up, um, that you're on point. I'm going to cough. <coughs> Excuse me, I still have a little bit of a lingering something um so yeah so you have to do it anyway and you have to make sure that your ego is not keeping you from getting what you want so i just wanted to stop by with that hey julian how are you i just wanted to stop by with that little nugget i still got some more work to do before i turn in yeah you get to see me again julian how exciting is that <laughs> Ugh, I know, but it's getting better. So, but I'm focused. Like my friend Asa says, I am in the middle of my healing process. So I'm not sick. I'm in the middle of the healing process. So you guys have a great night. I am going to, how do you push through your nerves when it's overwhelming? Um, okay, so I'm going to answer this because I think it's a great question. So I think for me, um, you really have to be centered on something. So I'm not sure if you pray or if you... Um, meditate or you know what you do but you really have to be centered on something because I think all of us get overwhelmed um, you know some days I look at my to-do list and and I get overwhelmed so I think overwhelm is natural um, especially if you're trying to do something big but I think that you you have to stay focused um, and so I think that um, oh thank you Mark <laughs> I, well, I, I don't know if it's good that I've learned to tune my children out, but that's what I have done. Um, good night, DeMarco. Thank you for joining me, honey. Um, but you have to find something that centers yourself. I was speaking to another colleague of mine, and she was talking about how many books she has to read on a daily basis. Because even when you're operating at a level where, where people think that you've got it made, um, you know, there's still challenges and there's still things that can throw you off your game. So you really have to, to be focused. Um, and then another thing that works for me is, is envisioning the end result. So say, you know, you have a speaking engagement and you're nervous and you're starting to kind of feel overwhelmed. I just focus 
um, on on seeing the end result and seeing a positive experience and seeing people, you know, giving me a standing ovation because I really gave them, you know, something with, that was valuable and that I really connected. Um, so you have so that really helps a lot, like focusing on the end result. Um, and uh, where did you garner your confidence? Um, hey, Sam, how are you? You know what? I, I just think that my parents instilled in me a really good sense of self. Um, and I think that one thing that I tell my clients who, you know, or who are feel, you know, who, who, who ha lack a little bit of self-confidence is that we really as human beings, um, don't have a track record of failure. I mean, we've succeeded in so much. Um, and so, you know, I think that when we get fearful and we, you know, we have this fear of failure, I mean, that really is not reality. Sure. We fail at things. Absolutely. But for the you know for 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 the most part our track records are successful. I mean we've done some phenomenal things. We learned to walk, we learned to talk, we went to school, we graduated, we you know we we've had children, we've raised families. We really have a track record of success. Um and for those who fear like, you know, I I talk a lot to entrepreneurs who think that, you know, they won't be able to make money in their business. Um and you know, it, that you know, we've made so much money um in in our lifetime you know, that we really do have a successful track record of making money. So we forget that and we become fearful. LaVon, absolutely. We were taught fear. I mean, we were not born with fear. I mean, if you watch a baby learning to walk, they have no fear um, about falling. They're just focused on the end result, which is walking, you know, probably to the refrigerator to get something to eat. But, um, you know, we, we have to, we have to implement tools and, you know, what works for one person may not work for somebody else. And I'm just sharing what generally works for me. Um, and, but I think that most people, um, you know, will find it. Hey, Rudy V. <laughs> Vicks Vapor Rub. I almost stopped and got some Vicks Vapor Rub, but then I had like traumatic memories uh, of when my mother used to slather us in Vicks Vapor Rub. I had a friend that told me that they, um, that their parents made them eat it, eat Vicks Vapor Rub. That's a great technique, um, Lewis, and that's what I do too. Um, kind of envisioning the end result and working backwards. That's great if you are putting together your profit and loss statement too, like figuring out, like if you're putting together an event or you're about to launch a program or you're creating a course, like figuring out how much money you want to make um, as the end result and then backing um, into like how much the course should cost, how many people you would need to buy the course, that sort of thing. So I think that's a great process as well. All right, <laughs> I digress. We're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff that I didn't mean to talk about on this broadcast, but I did want to pop on and I did want to leave you with that nugget. Um, and so hopefully, um, you know, you guys uh, will have a great night. You took something away from it um, and that we can all, you know, grow in our greatness together. Because I think that at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. We're all in this together and however we can help each other, um, I think that we're pretty much obligated to do that. All right. Bye guys. Thanks for popping on.